Our sermon text is the Gospel lesson for the Sunday after Easter. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here, and look at my hands, and reach your hand here, and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Thus far our text. Human nature stubbornly resists the gospel. Without the Holy Spirit's gift of faith, no one is able to believe. And this is not because the gospel is confusing, but because man, being sinful by nature, is not able to comprehend it. This is precisely why our Lord Jesus Christ instituted the office of the keys, which is the holy ministry, so that sinful man may hear the word, which is the power of God, and by it be converted and saved when they believe in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. For he says to the disciples in the gospel, As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And St. Paul teaches the same thing in Romans chapter 10, saying, How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? For this reason, the Augsburg Confession teaches in the fifth article, that we may obtain this faith, the office of teaching the gospel and administering the sacraments was instituted. For through the word and sacraments, as through instruments, the Holy Ghost is given. St. Thomas refused to believe the testimony of the other disciples until he himself had touched the risen Lord. In this, he sinned. For not only did the disciples testify to his resurrection, but the scriptures themselves taught that he would rise from the dead 
on the third day. Many Christian scholars consider Job to be the oldest book of the Bible. Dr. Luther speculates that Job was a contemporary of the patriarch Jacob. Yet Job is already confessing the resurrection of the dead, as we heard in today's Old Testament lesson. I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know, that in my flesh I shall see God. In this way, and in many other passages, Scripture foretold the resurrection long before, and the testimony of the other disciples only confirmed it. If St. Thomas did not believe them for their own sake, he should have believed them for Scripture's sake. But the Christ comes to him and restores him to faith by showing him his hands and his side. We should not think, however, that St. Thomas demanded something unreasonable when he wanted to touch the Lord's scars. It is what all the disciples had done, or at least had opportunity to do. As we read, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The point of this is that the disciples were the chosen witnesses to his resurrection. The Christ wanted them to see and handle his risen flesh for the sake of their gospel proclamation. If St. Thomas was to be an apostle, he had to be an eyewitness of the Christ's resurrection. <clears throat> So St. Thomas's sin was not that he demanded something so bold as to touch the Lord's flesh, but that he refused to believe the testimony of others. For this reason, the Lord says to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now this saying of our Lord applies especially to us. Because after the Lord's ascension, no one else has witnessed the risen Lord in the flesh. The one exception is St. Paul. And that is exactly why he is numbered among the apostles. But we, along with the rest of the New Testament church, must content ourselves with hearing the testimony of those who did see him. This may sound like a disappointment to some, but the Christ says, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. It is not at all a bad thing, or a disappointment, that we do not see him as they did. Rather, the Christ calls us blessed. Blessed because we have believed the testimony of the apostles. Blessed because we have received the means of grace through the regular use of the office of the keys. What advantage is this to us? Not that we have an advantage over the apostles, but an advantage, rather, over those who seek to behold the Christ in the flesh today, or who claim to have seen him in the flesh 
after the apostles. There is great advantage to seeking the Christ through his established office of the keys. Most of all is the assurance that by doing so, we obey the command and the institution of Christ. For he has established this ministry for the benefit of those who hear. And so the faithful response to such a gift is to use it as he intended. Whoever makes use of the office of the keys, that is, who seeks the forgiveness of sins from the pastors, this one honors Christ. Those who look for Christ and for Christ's gifts apart from the office dishonor Christ. Another advantage that we enjoy is that we know at all times where the forgiveness of sins is to be found. For we daily sin much, and it is a great comfort to troubled consciences to know where to go for relief. But those who seek Christ apart from the office, in visions of their own, do not have this assurance. For visions of Christ are nowhere promised, but are unreliable and dangerous. For this reason, the Christ's institution of the office makes it possible to distinguish between the true church and the false. Those who abandon Christ's commands for the sake of visions are surely false brethren and false teachers. But those who cherish the means of grace, as administered by the office of the keys, honor Christ. And this has been clear throughout the history of the church that one of the first and most recognized signs of false religion is the deconstruction or abandonment of either baptism or the Lord's Supper or of the whole office of the ministry by which these are given. But our Lord Jesus Christ has established an office of preaching and administering the sacraments so that sinners might hear the gospel, that Jesus is risen from the dead for the justification of sinners. He has given us the testimony of the apostles, those who saw and touched him, so that we might believe. And he appointed them to distribute the forgiveness of sins in his name to every generation. This office of the keys continues in the Christian church until he returns, so that sinners may believe. For sinful human nature is stubborn and unable to receive the gospel by its own powers. But the Holy Spirit, using the lips of the called minister, preaches his word. And that word is able to create faith in those who hear it. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.